I got 
chapter 2, verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. And again, you don't have to turn all of them, write them down. You can look at them at home, you know, uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It reads, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in who? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. So that's, that's pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you have to ask yourself, man. Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. <laughs> But our destiny, our goal is to pursue Christ, right? That's right. That's everyday walk. If you believe in Christ, is to pursue Christ. To be more like who? Like him. They used to have old saying back in the day, in the 80s, in the 90s, you just say, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> like Mike. If I can be like Mike, I want to I wanna be like Mike. But nobody wants to be like Christ. What is that song? So we have to learn to emulate Christ, right? Do our best to emulate Christ because we're believers in Christ. I can't be a believer in Christ and I don't have forgiveness in my heart. That doesn't make sense. I need some work. How can I do that? And I'm holding grudges and I'm Oh, man, I have all this going through my mind about hurting somebody because I have unforgiveness in my heart. Regardless of what a person has done to you, if they ask for forgiveness, they're forgiven by Christ. Just like your, your mess, your stuff that you've done in the past. That's right. Your slate has been wiped clean. So to be a believer in Christ, we have to learn to be conquerors. That's what that means. A Christian, a believer uh, whenever you, 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 you're in um, Christianity, it means to be a conqueror. That you're conquering things. Yeah. You're conquering all these different things. I say you're going to be perfect, but we're conquering right. that thing. I don't do the same thing I used to do because I conquered that. Right. And so now there's another mountain in front of me right. that I have to learn to climb. Right. But in order to get to the top of that mountain, I have to do my best to be like who? Christ. Like Christ. And see, the thing about it, when we're ready to do our best, something always come up. Right. Somebody going to tick you off. Right. Somebody, I'll go, oh, pre Pastor preached about uh, attitude today. I learned a lot about my attitude, and, I, and I'm working on it. I'm going to do my best today, and here it comes. Here yep, here she comes. They coming for you. <laughs> they finna throw your whole day off. you like, I just left church, and then you got me cussing. <laughs> yeah. Preach past AD. <laughs> Guess I'm the only one that could. <laughs> but it happens. Yeah. You can just leave church. Right. Just right. heard the word of God. Just got through praying. <laughs> and here come the enemy. Right. Ready to fire it up. Yeah. Like, now you bring it up. That was old. Now you want to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought we already <laughs> dipped that in the butt. You bringing that back up? Boy, I tell you, see, that's how the enemy works. Yeah. Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. So we already know we got to be like Christ, right? That's our motto is to be like Christ, to walk like Christ, talk like Christ. Not just to be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So Proverbs 17, 22. A joyful heart is good for good medicine, right? Yeah. That's good medicine to have a joyful heart. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. <laughs> That's deep. Yeah, it is. Because a joyful heart uh -huh. is good medicine. That's good. You're not stressed. You're not tripping. Because uh -huh. some folks can just trip. Yes, Every single day they just trip. Yes. All day. They just looking for something. Some people pick fights. They just looking to fight. Yeah. <laughs> Looking for some drama, looking for a challenge, yeah. looking for some hell because they full of hell. Yes, right. But a broken spirit dries yeah. up the bone. It's something when you meet a person that spirit is broken. Yeah. You can tell yeah. that they have deep issues. Yeah. Have you ever met somebody like that? Yeah. You can just see it that they have deep, deep set issues. 
that a lot of things have occurred in their lives and it has really damaged them. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So if you want to marry a damaged person, mm -hmm. you better be ready to fight. Hey, yeah. you better be ready to put up with it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You want to be friends with a damaged person, you have to be ready to take that challenge. Yeah. Because their spirit is broken. Yeah. But the thing about being a believer in Christ, as the outer man perishes, the inner man is being renewed day by day. God heals the heart. <laughs> Come on now. At least you with me, Evangelist. God heals the heart. I don't know about you if your heart ever been damaged. Anything ever happened in your life that was very traumatic. But God can heal those wounds. Some people say, well, some wounds can't be healed. Yes, they can. When you believe in Christ, and Christ comes into your life, he can heal your wounds. Somebody holler out, he healed me. He healed me from the inside. Proverbs 31 and 26. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 26. So we already know that in order to be a believer in Christ, we got to do our best to follow Christ, right? to emulate him, to, to be just like him. And then, not only that, but we also know that God heals wounds. Yes. And then we come to Proverbs 31, 26, and it says, she opens her mouth in wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. Yes. Well, what am I talking about? What kind of woman am, am, or is the Bible talking about here? Or what? A virtuous woman. Yes. All right, all right. Not every woman is virtuous. Preach, Pastor A.B. Not every woman is virtuous. But this particular woman, this specific woman is talking about, and there's many. She opens her mouth in wisdom. So majority of the time when she speaks, you're going to get some wisdom. That's amazing. That every time you open, a majority of the time you open your mouth is going to be with in your house. Yeah. Because see, a lot of us don't like to talk about our house. Because there's some things that go down in the house. That we don't want everybody to know about what goes on in our house. I remember as a kid, my grandmother always tell me, don't you tell what goes on in my house. That's true. Because we don't want everybody to know what happens in the house. Because there's some things that happens in the house that's not virtuous. That's not good. That's not of God. That's not of Him. And that's not emulating Christ. There's some things that happens in our house. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody and they preach past me. Oh, yeah, I A preacher know they're talking about somebody because they get real quiet. And they don't even want to look at it. But there's some things that happens in the house that you don't want nobody to know about. But you don't know and you forget that God is watching. That's right. That's right. But this woman house. <laughs> She was the type that said, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. The teaching of kindness is on her tongue. All she want to teach is kindness. It's hard to find people like that with love in their heart all the time. Because you can look at a person wrong, they'll cuss you out. But not on her tongue. No, she had a good tongue. Somebody how long she had a good tongue. Yeah. She, she was good with that. She, she was nice and gentle and kind. But some people you can approach and they're ready to bite your head off. Or even if you say something to them, they're ready to bite your head off. But this particular woman was godly. And that's our walk every day. Our every walk should be just should try to be just like Christ. Amen? Yeah. So let's go a little deeper. Romans 8 and 7. <laughs> Romans 8 and 7. Romans chapter 8, verse 7. And this is the Roman church, the church of Rome. And Paul is saying, because the mindset on the flesh is hostile towards God. Y'all get that? 
Apostle is a deep word. For it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. Yeah. Or Kelly wrote a song back in the day. My mind is telling me no. But my body is telling me yes. You see that? And that's the thing. The mind, the, this is the thing. It wrestles. The flesh and the spirit wrestles. It wrestles. Yeah. But a lot of times, let me tell you, for some folks that's in the church, some folks that's in the church, some folks that come to church all the time and think they're saved, a lot of times their mind, what happens, the, the, the body wins, it conquers, it overcomes yes. yeah. the spirit. Yeah. And that shouldn't be all the time. That's right. Majority of the time in that battle, your spirit should win. Yeah. The flesh. I'm not saying it's going to win all the time. Sometimes it's going to fail. Yeah. Right? That's what Paul tried to figure out in Romans 7. He tried to figure it out. And then he got to the point that said, he said, he said, this messed up man that I am. Oh, wretched. This old no good. This old something's wrong. I, I want to do it. I want to conquer it. I want to conquer sin, this sin problem. But for some reason, I can't. He wanted to emulate Christ so badly. But he came to a point that said, I can't. I can't conquer that. And then he said, thanks be to Jesus Christ yeah. who has died and rose for my sins. Because he found out he all these years, he's in, a, he's in an older state now, and when he writes in Rome, he's older. Because yeah. he's in prison, he's old. But he comes to finally figure it out. And sometimes it takes us a lifetime yeah. to figure out certain things right. in life. Right. And it comes to the point, it says that now I know that this alien, this flesh, this sin, that has been bothering me all this time. Yeah. I've been trying to conquer it. I've been trying to overcome it. But now I see that I can't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm doing my best. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Of following Christ. Yeah. Come on, I all right. mm -hmm. And that's the thing. We got to stop giving in to the flesh. Right. Somebody say the flesh is calling. And it does call. <laughs> oh, it calls. You can sit there like you're perfect all you want. But the flesh will call. But the thing about it, every time it calls, you ain't got to come running. That's right. That was an old song that said, whenever you call me, baby, I'll be there. Every time it calls, you ain't got to come running. Man, every time she calls, you ain't got to go running. Uh, let me stop. Thank you. Let me lay on that one. Romans. Romans chapter 15, verse 5. <laughs> Romans 15, verse 5. Romans chapter 15, verse 5. It reads, Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another. Y'all hear that, right? According to Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. Now, May the God who gives you perseverance and encouragement, look who gives it to you. It's not, it's not on your own that you have perseverance. Right, right. It's not on your own that you have this type of encouragement. This is a different level. Yes. Grant you to be the, of the same mind yes. with one another. And that's the thing. The church can't get on the same page. All right. Come on now. It's always drama in the church. Yeah. I told you last time, some of the folk, some of the hardest folks to get along with church, is people in the church. It is. Yeah, it. Because their attitudes yeah. are bad. Yeah. And the thing about it, if we can get on one page, on be of a sound mind and a sound body, yeah. we can make it work. Right. Things will just fall in place That's so right. easy. But it can't. There's always going to be some type of divisiveness within the church. Yeah. Attitude yeah. determines a lot. Attitude determines how this church is going to run. Attitude determines it determines a lot. Because when one person come in looking. <laughs> oh, that changes the atmosphere. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that what you put out yes. is what you get back? Yes. What you put out yes. is what you're going to get. I, I'm not, I guess not for everybody, but what you give me is what you're going to get back in return. Amen. 
in a way because you come at me a certain way, want to bite my head off, and I'm in a good spirit, I'm in a good mood, but it's like, okay, you, okay, I'm gonna leave it alone, and then you keep up. It's like, all right, now you're ready for it. Because that's what you put now. It's only so much a person can take. It's like, okay, I'm going to be, I, I get, okay, okay, okay. I can understand. I'm just keep going and keep going. All right now. <laughs> Have you ever got to that point with somebody? All right now. Yeah. I said, okay, I understand. But they steady want to pick. And that's what's wrong with the church. The church can't be in the same mind because we got attitudes that's messed up in the church. I'm going to say it so many. <laughs> but we got attitudes that's messed up in the church. But you let them tell it they holy. Yeah. Oh, you can't beat them put on their Sunday hat. You can't beat them putting on their Sunday shoes. They holy as ever. But be the first one to cuss you out. That's why a lot of young women don't come to church no more. Because the older women have pushed them out. That's why young brothers don't want to come to church because the first thing you complain about is they sagging and, and this and that and they don't and this and, it's not about that. I remember I visited when I was young. I was a teenager. I was out there in the streets and I, and I went and visited a church with my homeboys. Said, "Man, come visit my church." I said, "Show sure. you got some gals out. I'm coming." And I said, "Yeah, that's a big church." I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm definitely there." And so I show up. I got my earrings in, you know, and uh. They stopped me at the door and told me I got to take off my earrings before I come to church. I said, what? I said, you're coming to church, I got to take off my earrings. Said, what you talking about, man? The deacon, I'm talking to the deacon. I'm going to talk crazy to him now. I said, man, what you talking about, old boy? I got to take off my earrings. I said, I'm trying to come in and, you know, and hear the word and this and that. You going to reject me from coming into church with my ear just because I got earrings on? Yeah. I said, all right, bye. See, the thing about it, the church need to change their ways. The Bible says come as you are. And that is spiritually and physically. But it's so it's so wrapped up into this holy stage. And they forget that they fall short of God's glory too. Regardless of your title being bishop or, or, or apostle or whatever. <laughs> you need a reality check. Because if you are with, without sin, cast the word. If you're without sin, if you telling me your stuff don't stink, you telling me yeah. that you too good to let certain folks in the church. <laughs> this is God's house, yeah. not your house. Yeah. But they, they won't change into our attitudes. Yeah. Check. Yeah. Nothing won't happen into your mentality. That's it. Change. change. You can talk about getting off drugs all day. Ain't nothing gonna happen until your mentality. Change. You can talk about stop running those streets all day. Nothing won't happen until this change. To maturity happen. And I always say that your children don't mature you. I don't know what's gonna mature you. Some things ought to make you grow up. Really, when you were a man. Philippians 2 and 14. We have one more left after this. This is very important scripture. Philippians 2 and 14. I love this verse. Do all things mm -hmm. without grumbling mm -hmm. and disputing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's the church need to hear. Yes. Because there's always something in the church. Right. Always mess. Always gossip. Oh, look what she got on. Oh, look what, look what she wearing. Why he coming here like that? Man? Looking like that. Why he, there's always something. That's why nobody don't want to come to church. Because you're the problem. I'm going to say it. I ain't going to say it. Say it. Preach. But that's why nobody don't want to come to church. Because you're the problem. We the problem. We're, we're the problem in the church. From the pastor on down, deacons on down, to the missionaries on down. <laughs> From the elders on down, we go to church and pray. Elders on down, we all the problem. Every last one of us, because we think we're too much. 
when you know for a fact, you know that you know that you know that you know. Soon as you go out those doors, you're a totally different I mean, person. Yes, sir. That's good. Totally different person. Yeah. Negro person. Yeah. Totally different. But when you're in the house of God, you want to act like you holy. You want to act like you all that. You want to act like, oh, you too big and, and you can't be touched and all that. Oh, oh, oh don't touch me. Oh, no. But it has to stop. The church will not grow. The church will not get better. The church will not succeed and be successful until we change our attitudes, our mentality. You do a self-check. That's why Paul said, examine yourself. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, you must first pluck that thing out your eye first. Before you try to go plug somebody, how can I help somebody with a problem, a, a particular problem, and I got that same problem? That ain't gonna work. We might as well get together and have a party. How a fat person gonna tell another fat person to lose weight? That ain't gonna work. Because it ain't happened for him yet. I ain't gonna help his friend. I ain't gonna help me. I'm gonna help him. How the kettle gonna call her? How the pot gonna call her? Tell her black. It's not going to work. Somebody has to be the leader. Somebody has to take charge. Somebody has to mature and say, okay, I'm willing to change. Because I want to change to help other people change. That's the thing, children, young adults. We got to learn to be the leader. Don't be a follower. Be the leader. You don't have to do what everybody else do. You don't have to do what everybody else say. You don't have to go where everybody else go. Be different. Stand out. Make a difference. And say, because if I make this change, I can help everybody else change. And maybe everybody else will follow me. But we're so busy following the culture. Boys wearing purses now. Talking about that's the style. They ain't style. Stop following the culture. You gotta change the culture. That's right, man. Let's to change it. You are believers in Christ. You have to stand out. The Bible says, "Be like a lighthouse yeah. on a hill that cannot be hidden." That means stand out. When when a boat sees a lighthouse, they know the direction. Hey, you are the salt of the earth. Hey, season it. I don't like bland meat. You gotta cook you. <laughs> When I'm cooking meat, I gotta put barbecue, I gotta put something on it. That's right. That's right. Don't shortchange me. Yeah. But we're the salt of the earth, so season the earth. Yeah. Stop letting folks season you. That's right. But it should be done without grumbling and disputing. But every time you come to church, that's all you hear mess, gossip, mm -hmm. tripping, drama. Person wanna be this, but too many, it's, it's too many uh, uh, chiefs and not enough any. <clears throat> Preach fast, baby. Yeah. Philippians 3 and 15, our last one. Philippians 3 and 15, our last one. Let us therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude. Y'all hear that? Yeah. Let us therefore, Paul, this is Paul talking to the church of Philippi. As many as are perfect, have this attitude. What attitude? What attitude are you talking about? And if anything, you have a different attitude. And if anything, you have a different attitude. God will reveal that also to you. Because there's problems in the church again. There's problems within the church. And people want to have their own messed up attitude in the church. They bring their mess from out there to in here. They bring their drama from out there to in here. And they're ready to start it in the church. But have this attitude. I like to have this attitude. What attitude? A godly attitude, Christ-like attitude. Uh, an attitude that Christ has. Have this godly attitude. Stop getting so mad over little bitty things. Give a person a chance to conversate and converse with you. It's hard to converse with a person. Every time you try, they bite your head off. Come on, come on. Because my thing is, you ain't gonna get nowhere with me with Hollywood. Because if you raise your voice at me, I'm not receiving nothing. Everything just gone. Everything blotted out now. And I start sweating. 
I say, Lord, I, I'm trying, Lord. Anyway, in my mind, I'm thinking the whole time, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. But now I'm going to go off. Because hollering doesn't do anything to me. All it does is makes me upset. Because I'm not hearing nothing, I'm not receiving nothing. So the thing about it, let this be also in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. What's in Christ Jesus is meekness, kindness, love. Shelter. All this is in him. He was the many breasted one. He loved. He was a nurturer. He was a nurturer. He loved to nurture. He wasn't mean. He wasn't fussing. The only time you seen Jesus act up, that's when he says, okay, be, be angry, but sin not. He began to turn over the table in a synagogue because they were gambling and, and doing all kind of betting and all this stuff, trying to rob the church in the synagogue. And he went in there tossing over everything. And he says, okay to be angry. But say not. Nah. I can get angry. You can get angry. That's a God-given thing. We have a. Hey, we can get angry. Every last one of us in here can get angry. Even the nicest person in here, angry, she can get angry. I didn't have to whoop my baby that much because she understood. Probably like one time, I think that was it. But she understood. Real nice, meek, kind. I said, I said, I told her one day. I said, you know what? I said, you're my inspiration because I wonder sometimes how do you manage. When folks talk funny to you or loud to you, you say, yes, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. I wonder sometimes, yeah. how does that work? Because yeah. I be want to go off. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real with you. That's right, that's right. No, you ain't got a fake past. I'm going to keep it real with you because I want to let you know that I'm on a level that you are. I'm not that big. Are you, I'm not that big that you can't come call me or, or touch me or text me. Yeah, a lot of pastors like that. Yeah, come on, say it. Yeah, I dare you to ask a person at some of these churches that do they have contact note. No. He don't even know my name. Yeah. He don't know nothing about me. We gotta do this when we go into church. Yeah. We gotta do. We can't wear anything. You, you gotta do this and gotta do that yeah. in the church. The church is so far off. That's it. Say it again. Say it again. The church today. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's so far off. Yes, we have left the Bible. That's it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, let me say they have left the Bible because we go scripture by scripture. We are a biblical based church. A lot of them about entertainment. A lot of them about uh, who, um, um, who who got it and who don't have all that kind of crap and. Divisions in the church. If you go to these bigger churches, you'll see them. Divisions in the church. You'll see a group over here set together. A group over here don't set together. A group over there they set together, and it's it's crazy. But it all starts with who? The head. If the head is messed up, the whole thing is messed up. The other day, and I'm done. In a meeting, we call it a rah rah. We have a new manager who has contaminated the place. And so, I'm outspoken. If you bring something to me, you bring it to me, I'm going to say something. Okay, we're going to say it now. Because what you, you said, man, everybody going to rally us down, and then he's going to point at me, it's because of you. I said, what? I said, you, I said, the nerves of you. I said, you got the nerves. I said, what nerves do you have? And we have cameras in there, I don't care. But what nerves do you have to point me out whether you're playing or not? I don't care now. Because now we're on a different level. No, I'm not the problem. Your boss is the problem. Everything was all right before he got here, but he's the problem. Oh. Be quiet now, you know the camera's white. But don't bring it to me. You ain't gonna put nothing on me. If I'm supposed to agree to it, but I always say, "Here go little AJ. Here you go. Even this car." But it's all about. It's all about this, man. It's the truth. The truth will set you free. That's a true statement. They used to say that back in the 70s on the shows and stuff back then. But the truth will set you free. Whenever you speak the truth, people don't like the truth. The enemy don't like the truth. But when you tell them the truth, out of love, you tell people the truth and how things should be working, how things ought to work, and what the Bible says because the Bible is the truth. It's God's spoken word. God breathed yeah. out on the Bible. Yeah. And when you tell them the truth, they don't like it. They don't want to hear it. They'll run from it. Yeah, yeah. They'll get mad. No, no, no. Get me wrong. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. 
Now, if you're going to tell somebody the truth, you better be ready and understand this might not be your friend no more after <laughs> Your little clique might not want to be around you no more. You might just be all by yourself. But before you tell the truth, I just want to let you know it. Because when you tell a person the truth out of love, and how it really is, a lot of them don't like it. Because like I said last time, words cut deeper than a knife. Yes, it does. But you told it. And now it is. And now it is out there, Brother Tom. It's hard to take it back. I don't want to take back because I meant what I said and what I said is what I meant it is I used to say that a long time ago when I preached it is what it is ain't nothing you can do about it but if we don't change our attitudes in the church nobody will come every church that's hearing me and watching this video every pastor Every bishop, whatever you want to call yourself, apostle, elder, whoever you are, if you don't change the church, the culture, if you don't change the mindset, there you go, that's it, that's that you're too holy, yeah. come on. and you all that, and you're too good to have certain people coming to your church, yeah. we're gonna lose. That's it, that's it. The church is not gonna grow, there you go. and we have failed. God. Yes, we are called to be shepherds. Yes, yes, shepherds of light. That's right. That's right. But we're not so. That's right. Not lately. That's not for years. Right. Right. But it starts with you. That's right. That's right. To make that change. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Your church is corrupt because of you. The church have problems because of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bishop, apostle. Yeah, yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah. But it have problems because of you. Because you're so prestigious. Prolific. And your degrees. There you go, there you go. Over two months you became a doctor. Come on, come on, come on, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm talking to you. Incredible. It's not. It's not. If you don't get your act together, if you don't change your mentality, That's right. you're going to destroy God's people. Yes, and the Bible says that woe to you yes, who scatter my sheep. Yes, yes. That's the word. That's the word. Our job is to love people. Yeah. Yeah. Love everybody. Yeah. No matter who it is. Love them. Bring them into the church. Bring the sheep into the fold. And once they're in the fold, then you teach them how to be young men. Yes, you're going to run into feminine men, but you're going to teach them how to be a man. Yes, you're going to run into women that's wild and out there, but you teach them how to be a woman. A woman of God. That is the church. The church is a hospital. We ought to show hospitality to people. Not run them away. Not push you out. That's not how it's supposed to be. Not talk about the young ladies when they walk in. That might be all they have. Buy them some clothes. Teach them how to be a young lady. They might not have a mom that was around. They might not have a dad that was around to teach them how to be a young lady. But our job is to exemplify how to do that. Living a Christ like life. Yes. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.